it's time for the big conversations telling stories of movers and shakers of industry giants and daring professionals it's time for the conversations that change your perspective on life the kind of conversations that shape entrepreneurs and move careers forward if you don't know where these conversations are found we are sending you a gps but if you're listening to this voice right now you are here Welcome to the Growth Podcast. This is the GPS. Welcome, welcome uh, to episode 56 of the Growth Podcast. The conversations continue. Uh, last week we had um, Peterson, very insightful gentleman, like very impressive guy. Um, and then the week before we had the CEO from Zanaco, uh, very calm, collected, uh, but very deep. Um, with the thoughts um, what a beautiful conversation we did have uh, the conversations do continue this particular episode is brought to you by emark um, we have obviously the founder and ceo who give us a little bit more detail about emark but for me the interest really is around the business acumen and that's what this conversation really is about if you've noticed we try the best we can to balance um, we have people in the arts that we've had in the podcast we have people who are in careers that are trying to push for a career or those that have really made um, a career for themselves and then also we have the entrepreneurs those that believe you know what the money is here it's not out there um, and those are the ones that we bring and the whole idea behind that is these are the ones that are doing it may not be perfect may not be like the best best but they are the ones that we can look up to and learn from them the mistakes they've made the journey they've been on and that's why we bring the podcast um, like that to you. And we do hope that um, we're adding some value to your life. Um, thank you so much for all those that uh, are never shy to give the feedback on Instagram. Tag us on your Instagram stories. Um, if you learn a lesson, share with someone. That's how the podcast grows. And also, that's how you grow um, as an individual. Like I did say, I think a fortnight ago, we'll be doing three episodes in a month um, of the podcast. So, yeah. Uh, keep that in mind. So when there's no podcast, you know why there's no podcast. Because we're doing three. Uh, my fear is it will become three, two, one, no podcast. But that's not going to happen. For now, I'm just doing three. Anyway, here is my guest, um, Emmanuel Mwanza. Welcome to the Growth Podcast. Thank you very much, Sui. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Super excited to join you on, on this podcast. My pleasure is mine. Uh, you have to move the microphone. Uh, okay, great. I'm not your everyday camera media guy, so please... None of the people come there are media, are media people, but yeah, yeah, anyway, we try to be as, as accommodating as possible. How have you been? Been well, thanks. And yourself? It's good to see you. You look well. Good, thank you. I was, I was telling you earlier, it's the first time I'm in a suit because I'm right. coming from work. Oh, so, yeah? So, yeah, the nice. podcast is making me work over time. By the way, congratulations. Oh, on the Zamto thing. Yeah, yeah. it's good. How are you settling down? No, it's a good experience. Eh? Uh, new environments. Feels like those days when you put at a new school like right. new boy or like how okay. they just call you a new boy not the new boy the new boy but yeah uh, it's been a good uh, three months or so and uh, i think i've settled how was your trip i saw you went to was that the united states oh yeah I, how, I was was that? how was that it was great it was nice what were you uh, doing there so i went for um, an entrepreneurship training program um, a leadership program focusing on innovation uh, leadership and entrepreneurship and just how best young people can impact their communities okay yeah we'll get into that um a little bit later um but for now obviously like i did say people know you as um the emac guy i'm sure right. some people actually call you emac uh <laughs> most people actually don't know my name they don't know you just know emac i'm not sure they know my name but though most of the times call me emac mr emac and how do you yeah. feel about that I, th I think, um, well, I do feel great, um, especially that people can recognize me with, with the brand. It means we've done some some great stuff and people know me from that light. So it makes me feel great. It makes me feel good. It's like we there's some brand visibility. People know about us. People have an idea that we exist. So, um, yeah, it's great. It's good. Okay. Let's start with, 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 with like a bit lighter questions right um do you have like a morning routine of course i do of okay, course I and do. How's, how's that like um so i try by all means to wake up at least by 4 a.m in the morning um then i would pray i would read my bible i would read a chapter of a book that i'm reading at the moment 
then I would go to the gym. After that, I get to work. That's like my daily routine. Even on weekends? No, on weekends I try to sleep in, man. I, I try to sleep in. It it gets hectic during the week, so I try to sleep in at least. And, and, and what time do you report for, for, for work? 8 a.m. 8 a.m.? Yeah. Okay. How's, today just these people who have this thing, ah, it's your business, I can just, you know... Show up at 10, you know, <laughs> if, if there are any calls, they'll call me, I'll, I'll respond on the phone. In fact, today... Do you feel I, like that's a bad work culture? Um, today, I was, um, today I was in the office um, as early as 6 a.m. I opened the, the doors to, to our store this morning. Um, look, um, if you're a business owner, by default, you're a leader. And um, it's important that people see what you're trying to to tell them to get to do in you first. So um, I don't think it's it's a very good culture, especially if you're trying to instill a certain culture into the organization that you could stay away from your business because it's your business. You're not answerable to anyone. I always think that as entrepreneurs and business owners, we are actually answerable to our employees as well as customers. So we need to show up. We actually need to be the first people to show up. and. In some instances, the last people to 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 leave to leave the building. That's the case with me sometimes. Okay. Yeah. How many books would you say you've read? Wow, maybe over four hundred books. You've read over four hundred books. Yeah. No, not pages. I mean books. Over four hundred books. How possible is that? I try to read. Um, <sighs> well, I I do travel quite a lot. And because of that, you know, it's, I think I get the chance to read books. So sometimes I would finish two books um, on, a, on a single flight. Yeah, it happens. How many pages are those books? Because <laughs> you see, well, for me, I, I struggle reading books in a moving vehicle. I don't know, I can't. No, but you see, when you're up there, it's, um, it's different from... From just like roads. what do they have? What movies do they have? Let's see. Let's see what yeah. movies are ah, this one. No, because I'm not so I'm not so big on movies. So ah, then I, I and it's difficult for me to sleep um on a flight. So I resort to books. Okay. Yeah. So I and could, of, of all the books you've read, which one would you say was your all time favorite that you learned the most from? So they keep changing, hey? They What's keep the changing. One? Um if I may, can I talk of three? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because then I'm conflicted. I'm not sure which one is which amongst these three, but it would be The Power of Personal Discipline. That's Brian Tracy. This is one of the first books I ever read. Um, the Alchemist. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great book. Now the third one, I've read so many great books. Hey, what would be the third one? I'm, I feel like I'm cheating on some of the great books if I don't bring <laughs> them here. Yeah, but um, The Power of Personal Discipline, the monk who sold his Ferrari. Yeah, yeah, Robin Sharma. Robin Sharma. He would be my favorite author any day. Okay. Yeah. That's 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 interesting. So let's yeah. let's go back to to your your Unza days. Right. I want you to talk me through your becoming an entrepreneur. At what yeah. point did you begin to realize, you know what? Maybe I'm just cut out to be a business guy. It wasn't clear though. Um Look, I'm, I'm coming from a background where my parents respected education. And that's like the, the one thing we knew. Like education is the key to success, which it is. Um, I think there would be no entrepreneurship without education. So I, I started business actually um, before I got to the University of Zambia. But as a sole trader, of course, it was at a very, very small scale. I, I never thought I would actually end up doing it as a career, you know. I thought this is just me making extra cash. But uh, as life would have it, I realized that I started enjoying what I was doing. Of course, not knowing that this is the route I'm taking. I was just there in the moment, I'm excited. And what happened was I needed to balance, right? I needed to balance between school and, and, and business. And what would happen is on any day when I'm faced with whether to pick being in a lecture or being out there doing business, business would always win, right? So there was a trade-off. 
and I, th- I I think it became very apparent that this is what I wanted to do when I realized that I would rather be out there doing business as opposed to being in, in, in a lecture. So I think I became very okay and comfortable with the idea that, look, this is what I want to pursue because um, then devices were just on the rise and, you know, that time from BlackBerry uh, going up. So for me, I realized this is what I wanted to do. So school should at least suffer. You know, you can't save two masters at a time. So I was okay with getting C's. For me, it was just, let me graduate to respect my, you know, my parents and people that have invested in me, but also the spa in finishing. So let me just get done with my degree. But ultimately, this is a route I intend to take. And yeah. Okay. So before Unza, you're already doing the business? Of course, I was. Um... You know, after I completed my high school, that gap year between completing high school and your uni, uni yeah. um, I, I was working as a waiter at Wimpy Manda Hill. Um, so, yeah, I of course, I'm not advertising their clothes now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I was working as a waiter at Wimpy Manda Hill. I raised a bit of capital from there. And that is when I started. Um, I got uh, inducted into the business of selling devices through a Facebook uh, page called Let's Talk Amasambo. It was a group at the time. So you could buy stuff online and then sell. Initially, I started off selling. um, These would be sport phones. Maybe the screen is broken. The battery is, yeah. I would buy those phones that were in, 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 in that state, have them fixed, repaired of some sort, then I would resell them at a profit. That's how it started. But over time, I met a few friends that were already in the business. They introduced me to to their suppliers um, who would then bring phones from South Africa into Zambia. So yeah, I was doing that before getting into university. And by the time I was getting into university, I had clientele. I already have customers that would call me. And so it was exciting. And I remember um, uh, during my time at Unza, when it's busy day, it was payday for me. I'd been my in my room, and I know that I knew those days, man. I'd, I'd be in money, so I'd just be counting money the whole day, and people would be coming to the room, and they'll be they'll be they'll be buying devices like like crazy. So, yeah, from there I think it just it just started growing. And my story is like I I said I didn't start out to be a business person. It it only started getting clear the more I, I continued doing business to so, say, oh, okay, this is what I wanted to pursue. Because as I kept going, opportunities started coming. You know, I met people that introduced me to suppliers. I met new customers. Um, it was just really, it was more of a way that was, you know, like it was just opening up. It was just opening up as we as I kept going. And yeah, I remember at the time when I was in my First, second year is when I took my first trip to China to just go and see what's there and what's happening. I, I took that risk. And yeah, it was just every step I took, it felt like it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Okay. And the, the thing I wanted to, 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 to learn from you is your your wimpy time we've established yeah. advertising uh, your wimpy <laughs> yeah. your wimpy time i heard i heard this from someone very senior stanchard and they told me right i think my guy was at a wimpy he was a wait are you sure yeah it was a wait yeah. yeah and you say True. that now that was what you used as your capital for a business yeah and i always tell people who are working um in retail chains and right outlets and you find someone has a job yep it pays them not a lot of money. Right. But they don't see that money as capital. They want capital from elsewhere. Yeah. So they look at you no know, government empowerment. That's true. That's or true. They, now there's what you call this in constituency, CDF. You right. Know, they right. go to the Ministry of SMEs and whatnot. And as long yeah. as that's not there, whatever income they have, small as it is, is yeah. to them not good capital. Because I don't know, in Zambia, it's like capital is must be 50,000 or whatever. That's true. How yeah. did you build that? Because I can imagine the money that you're getting paid then I don't even think your salary could buy an iPhone right now. <laughs> That's true. Um, actually, I do have my uh, my payslip, one of my payslips um, on my table in my bedroom, and I look at it every day. I used to get um, 
a thousand quarter 26 at the end of the month. But also um, there's what you call tips in these restaurants. And, and I think it's one of the things that makes people be comfortable. And that's a problem with assured income. And that's why maybe sometimes people don't step out. It's not, I don't, I don't think they necessarily wait for um, 50,000 kwacha to start or maybe a lump sum. But I think it's, the, it's being comfortable with an assured source of income. So when we report at Wimpy those days, when we reported, we knew that at the end of, of the day, you are knocking off with 100 kwacha, with 200 kwacha. And I think it's a problem when you know that on the 30th, you're getting um, a paycheck. I think that just disturbs how we look at money. And that is why maybe you would see a difference in terms of how entrepreneurs and, and, and employees relate with money. Because entrepreneurs, today they can have the money. It's not a short income. And therefore, they are prudent in how they just understand money. So I don't think people are necessarily waiting for a lump sum, but it's knowing that on, after 30th, I'm getting this uh, assured income. And that is, that is what makes people to then be comfortable. But in my story, I, I looked at how I could then just increase this money. So like I told you, I didn't start out to say I'm going to do business. I was looking for ways to just, you know, grow my my revenue, grow my... In fact, I was trying to raise as enough money for myself before I could um, get into uni. So pretty much I was just trying to save. So I was looking for ways um, to grow and just save as much. So I think it started from there, uh, really. And that should be the case for, I think for every individual, it's how can you make extra income? Is it a side hustle? Uh, whatever, it, whatever it takes, legal, how can you just make extra income? And, and like I told you, mine didn't start out as I'm going in cutthroat entrepreneur business person. It, it was just, it was, it was fun. And, and, I, and I talk about this. I talk about the power of casual conversations. Um, it's only when I sat with a friend of mine who I used to work with at Wimpy Mandahe and I was like, look, you, you're buying um, devices um, on Let's Talk Ama Sample and, and I know it's stressful because I, I went inside um, the Chooks police cells three times for selling um, stolen devices. So this friend of mine and we're having very, very casual conversations over um, a bottle of Fanta and he says, why don't you explore places like eBay? Um, cause there you, it's, 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 it's legit stuff. It's legitimate and it's good. There are deals there. Like, I, I feel this stuff that you're doing, um, is something that can grow into a business. And this is what I tell people. I honestly, I, I get a lot of accolades. People think I'm smart and, 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 and I'm good at business, but I think the truth is I just tend to listen more, um, uh, to people. And this guy says, why don't you take this as a business? I think something that you can do. And I remember after that conversation, I went straight and I tried to, I, I went straight to set up an eBay account and I ordered my first device, which never arrived until four months because then I didn't know. I was, I was, I was, I was, a, nov I was a novice at it. I didn't know that I needed to use a third party a shipping company to get my goods here. What I did was I just entered Lusa. my home address, yes. <laughs> and, and obviously this guy in Atlanta or wherever he was at the time is wondering, where's Lusaka? So it took four months. Apparently it was kind enough um, to ship using the post office. So after four months um, is when I received that. But yeah, um, I think it's just about, it's ambition, eh? I talk about how ambition for me is, is the common denominator for every successful person. Like, how much do you want it? For me, it was about how can I change the narrative um, in terms of my, my, my status economically as a person? I don't come from a poor family, but also I don't come from a very well-to-do family. So I know what it means to be kicked out of school because 
fees were not paid on time. So my ambition was how could I change the story of my life? So I was always looking out for opportunities and just ways to to advance and better myself. And it started from there, really. Um, I know it, the story is different for other folks, but for me it was about how do I then just move from point A, from point A to point B. And the process, like I said, stuff started getting clearer and, and, and clearer and clearer and clearer as, as, as we moved. All right. Um, how would you say you've built financial discipline over the years? Because I feel like for the most part, that's what draws the distinction between yeah. a business person that succeeds and one right. that doesn't. Because you can see some people make your first 100,000 kwacha, Instagram will suffer, you know. Yeah. There'll, there'll be stories. You know those stories to my dots, those to my dots. Yeah, yeah, 50 yeah, yeah. of them of yeah. how they left Lusaka Airport, arrived, what and what and what. And then they come back, the business, they can't even pay their staff. And now it's crazy, you know, especially the times we're living in. It's it's, it's crazy. I think that the desire to want to show off that you're making money, you're living large, and it's the pressure is getting worse and worse every day. Well, for me, to be honest, I think um, my work with God has played a huge role in, in, in how I look at the world and how I look at the money, but more so um, it would be where I want to go yeah, and, and where I want to be and how I, and how I perceive success. I feel I've got a very long way to go, a very long way to go, Sui. Um, but also, I, I've had an opportunity to interact with some of some of the richest people, even just here in Zambia I and mean, out there. And when you look at what you have and say, uh, we need to work hard. We need to work hard. So for me, I think one of the things that helps me to be in perspective is where do I want to, to be as a person? If I, if I arrived yet? How far am I from where I want to go? And like you're saying, people think we are doing great stuff at EMARC, but I feel we've not even done 10% of, of what we need to do as a business. So there's need to work hard um, as a business, as a person. Yeah, because it's, the journey is long, I think so. How do you manage costs as a business? Because there's a difference between the time that your business was, for example, just on Facebook. Right. And now you've got a store. Um, you've got two stores in town, right? Yeah, we've got a store in town. Uh, we've got, got a store at East Park. Yeah, those three, right? Now we just have two, so it's it's in Kwasi. We closed down the. Oh, you closed the other yeah, one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know the Kwasi one. So the Kwasi and the East Park store. Yeah. Um, how do you manage your costs, especially around rent? For example, East Park is. I I, I know what you went through to get there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's you crazy. find the rent is in US dollars and whatnot. Then you've got your staff to pay, you've got your tax obligations, you've got all these, and there are others that you may not even plan for, for example. Yeah, that's true. And how do you manage those and still come up with a profit? <sighs> to be honest, I Because think, I'm asking that because yeah. there are a lot of young people who have Instagram businesses, right? but they would like to establish brick and mortar, you know, yeah, yeah, um, presence. Yeah, yeah. But just for others also, they just dread from afar. Yeah. You, know, just, <laughs> you don't even bother thinking about it because you're just convinced it's expensive. So um, I'm, I'm actually terrible at costs, eh? Um, I'm the guy who wants to get stuff done at whatever, at whatever cost. Um, rentals and uh, paying workers would obviously be our largest cost as a business. Um, it's not easy to manage those, and especially that some costs um, vary. Um, as per forex, so it becomes really, really hard to to manage these costs. It's not always that that we we get it right um, in terms of of costs. But I think when you look at business, um, for me, I look at um, I look at it from a place of maybe it could be years, and I'm thinking. Sometimes as a business, you're just investing, right? You're just investing. You should be okay with just investing. You're not getting profits. So sometimes I look at it from, from that perspective. And there are times when I look at the costs and they're just crazy and it's not making sense. And I'm like, oh, okay, what are we doing as a business? What did we set forth to do this year? Um, did we want to invest so much in marketing? And for example, like you said, 
it was costly for us to, to first set up the East Park. We were paying renters for about four months uh, during the, the period of, of, of building. And this is- You not, are paying renters while we're building? Yeah. <laughs> to, a, to a tune of over $3,000, over $3,000 a per month. month. Yeah. And you're not making any money out of it? No, we were setting up. Wow. Yeah. So it's crazy. And, 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 and I think if you are going to look at it from profit every time, you be out of business. Sometimes you just you need to be okay with just investing, and yeah, it's knowing where you at where you at as a business, and say what are we trying to to do this year? Are we just trying to invest money in branding, trying to invest money in marketing? So yeah, I think for me, I look at it from that perspective. Did you see that video of Jack Ma? Um, there was a video where Jack Ma was talking to his colleagues when we were talking right. about Baba. You saw that video? No, I didn't. Well, you should. So he was he. You know that thing where. In your circle, you get your friends, right? The ones yeah. that you believe, these guys, I think, can help me carry this vision. These are my people. Yeah. These are my people. So he got them together. I don't know, about maybe like eight to ten of them. And he's telling them, guys, I want you to change your lifestyle. Yep. Go to your homes. Tell your families you're going to be very busy. Yep. You will put your work into this company. We'll build this company. But first five years, there's no profit. That's true. There's, forget about no, make money. We will not make money first five years. If you're in it, stay. If you're not in it, you can go. If you want to stay... We work together, we we'll build a company, we we'll build a business. In Zambia, if you have the conversation, obviously, when, by the time you're done, you'll be alone. That's true. That's because true. Because people want instant gratification. Like, okay, we, and that's why I always talk, that's why betting is on the rise. That's true. Because I want, I put in my money, 90, after 90 minutes, Kalida, you get a point? Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that kind of lifestyle. But the, the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up is even for you, what keeps you going? For example, Jack Ma had that five years. I don't know what it was for you. Yeah. Um, that 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 no profit period, that investing period. Um, because they're investing. I don't know, maybe you're still investing. Get a point. Maybe you're still in the investing phase. What keeps you going? Where you're you're paying someone a salary and right. you know deep down that look, even if I'm paying you a salary, I haven't made any money. But anyway, here you go. What keeps me going? Yeah. It's where we want to be as a business the next five years and, and ten years. Because I'm looking at the opportunities just around Zambia. Device penetration is currently at 38%. So meaning much of our population is not connected. So therefore the demand for devices will keep increasing over time, right? The world is a global village um, now. And so there's more need for people to, to connect now digitally than ever. And so for us, those opportunities. There's a report by, by the UN that as of 2050, Africa will be the largest uh, uh, um, continent in terms of population. So what that means is that we'll see much of, because if your population is growing right, um, you expect that there's going to be increase in demand for your goods and services. And Africa, Zambia in particular, there's a lot of untapped sectors and the technology has uh, somewhat not taken off the traction it has taken off, but the traction is not as much. But it keeps growing. We can see trends. And therefore, for us, we feel we are in the right sector as a business. And the more we invest in our business, the more we do it right. I think there's some great stuff awaiting. I mean, we are poised to be a, a continent where much of your VC, which is your venture capital or venture funding, um, will start coming to Africa because of the population. So it's about people who start people are doing and getting it right now that will be i think market ready when these opportunities just begin to to fruition so stuff like that keeps us in business but overall i think it's it's our mission and our vision as a business for us we want to see how best africa can be connected and how we can make technology accessible so much as it is about the money it it is also about the vision of the business. And for me, that is what keeps me going and investing in the business and also just trying to, like you talked about, teams. Um, can people actually agree to the fact that, guys, look, it's going to be crazy. We need to invest in our business. And for me, that's one of the things I, I look for in, in, in anybody that I'm, I'm going to work with. And I've got this crazy, crazy um, way of employing people Sometimes I'll bring people on board and I would offer them little. Not that we can't pay them much, just offer them because I think we are in our building phase. We could afford um, to pay. And I think competitively looking at um, 
the labor market in Zambia. But sometimes I just try to and see where people um, minds are in terms of how they perceive business, more businesses, and and just building. So yeah, it's it's knowing that we're gonna be a great company. It's knowing that there's lots and lots of opportunities if we just stay the course. Um, and that's that that is what keeps me just investing, being patient in the business, albeit not making profit sometimes. When was the last time you saw your degree? When was the last time you saw your degree? Um, no, it's, it's in one of, um, I've kept it very close in, 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 in most of the documents I, uh, where I keep my documents. You haven't answered the question. When was the last time? When was the last time you saw it? <sighs> Some months ago. <laughs> Five, six? I can't remember, but yeah. I saw mine today. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why I'm asking you is because have you ever had a moment where you feel like, you know what? Ah. Maybe let me just go look for a job. This won't work. Have you ever had that moment? Wow. My goodness, tough question. How do I say this without making it seem like I'm relegating the importance of education? No, I have never looked at it uh, from that angle. Yeah. It's been smooth sailing. I'll just look at it. It's my document and uh, I need to keep it well. Okay. Yeah, I look at it from that perspective. How is your relationship like with your with your staff? It's great. Um, um, we have a very young um, young team. I think the oldest in our team is um, is thirty two, who recently joined us. But I do have a great relationship with with my friends. I call them friends mostly. We we joke and uh, yeah, it's it's family, and that is one of of. It's, it's, it's based around our ethos as a business of Ubuntu. And for us, it's, it's, it's about people first. It's how can we build a business that is people-centered. And for me, and, and I think people come first and are at the core of what we do. How can we build a business that nurtures happy employees? How can we build a business that inspires and ignites hope? Um, for the young people coming from marginalized communities, your Kalinga Linga, your Mtendere, and so on and so forth. So people at the core of what we do as a business, and therefore I think, I, I, well, I don't think, I'm happy to submit that we have a very healthy working environment at EMAC, and we relate as friends, um, and people, most people would say this, they, they can't tell if you've never met me, if you've never heard our story anywhere, you wouldn't know who's who because we, we just vibe and, yeah. I, I've, I've asked this question so many times. I want to get your answer. And why I asked you how yeah. your relationship is with your staff is because obviously I expected you to say it's great. I don't think you can come here and say it's very bad. Those guys are very, you know. Um, <laughs> but how do you draw the line? Because they say they're your friends. Yeah. And some people then, the line becomes blurry yeah, they can't true. tell that. Okay, now, 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 this is my boss. Okay, now we're friends. Now we're, and so people miss targets. Performance is on the way down because ah, Nzava was a child. Just explain to the boss. I mean, he's my friend. After this, we'll be joking. Most yeah. likely, ah, I have listened this on trending. Ah, post a video, and and so there's a lot of familiarity around because That's true. first of all, That's you true. are young. It's the same age group. Um, and you, like you said, you've built this culture of we're friends, we're cool. Yeah. How do you still have that, but still have the guys deliver? Have the guys understand where the line is drawn? Well, I, 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 I have this notion that people, it's, it's not difficult to, to impress people. It's really not difficult. Um, there are certain things that we do as an organization just to bring people in check that, look, guys, much as we are friends we are also here to work and deliver results so for example we always have um, weekly meetings every monday we are reviewing stuff how is our performance how are we doing how are we are we meeting our kpis as a business and those deliberate um things that we've put in place as a business sort of um then helps us to actually remember that, oh, we are actually here to work. And when there's a problem, for example, if ourselves, 
um, in the previous month were, were not as good, then it's like a gentle reminder to say, guys, we are doing something wrong. So we do have a way we just review, we, we do appraisals and we sit down and, and look at um, where are we. But also I think I try as much as possible to be a situational leader who then I tilt as per situation, right? So I'm not just going to be your friend the whole day. Is Have you made a mistake? Are you not delivering? So I'm going to treat you based on how you're performing as a person. So I, I try to be a situational leader. If people are in a good mood and they're delivering, there's no reason to to bulldoze. You know what I mean? So it's just to tilt, be that leader who's, if people are not delivering, is it out of negligence? Is there anything wrong? But also I feel as leaders, the, the urge to try and blame people is so big because I mean, we can get away with it because we, we own these businesses and people can't um, call us out when we are making mistakes. But I think as leaders, there's so many things that I think everything falls and rises on leadership. And therefore, I think for me, I feel I've got a huge responsibility. If my employees are not delivering, there's a chance that I have not put certain things in place and not it's because we are friends or... Um, I don't know, it's because of how we relate. I think we, as leaders, we've got the duty, the mandate to put systems that ensure that employees uh, perform despite their relationship. Have you ever had to fire someone? Of course, yeah. What happened? Uh person was just moody. And, um, we fired them because it's a bad mood. No, we were trying to establish what was wrong and uh, we just couldn't. I think that wasn't helping helping the, the organization. How do you balance between this guy is not performing, right? Um, he's moody, and obviously that rubs off the wrong way on customers and the brand. Yeah. And you have this, but then he has a family. He just had a little child. This is his only income. Yeah. Maybe let me just hold on a bit. Let me just the human side and the business. How do you balance those two? Well, it's, it's, it's tricky, to be honest, really. It's tricky because sometimes I feel the instances where I've paid people in terms of salary, not based on performance, but just based on where they are as, as, as a person in terms of where they're coming from and uh, maybe obligations that they have. So it's, it's tricky. Um, I'm learning how to do that. But a friend of mine recently told me to say the biggest problem in Africa is that we are very emotional you know, about businesses and, 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 and things. So I'm trying to see how I could then um, balance between um, business and the human side. It's, it's not the easiest of things to do, but I think, thank you, appreciate it. Um, it's not easy, um, but sometimes, like I, like I told you, you have to be a situational leader. Um, you deal with things as per situation. Um, you can't, be, there's no extreme. It has to be a mixture of grace and truth. You need to, to balance. So where you have to show grace, you show grace. For example, if there's a mistake in the organization, is it out of negligence? Is it because people didn't know? Or they just didn't care at all? Or so you want to, to establish why there was a mistake in the first place. Is it because you did not train these employees on how to to handle a certain situation so based on those factors then you can you can you can decide on what route to take okay so like i said earlier our episode is brought to you by emac um hence this water bottle <laughs> i want us to talk about the 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 brand yeah um i've noticed you're very deliberate um about the brand yeah um and i know that it's not easy to build a brand um there are, I don't know, I mean, there are a lot of businesses that are into gadgets. That's true. Um, a few like yours that really stand out in yeah. terms of the brand, the packaging. I received, I think that was a Christmas gift from you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. With the uh, the notebook and the personalized, you know, name on the shiny. And it made, made yeah. me feel like, okay, I think I'm, uh -huh. I've arrived. Nice. Um, because also, I understand that business is not really about selling a product. 
Yeah. It's about how you make the customer feel. That's true. Um, you guys brought Casper in your vest um, to the opening of your Eastpark launch. Yep. And I did hear conversations that people are saying, ah, but what's the logic? Did they, would they, did they have to? Uh, that thing where it doesn't make sense to other people. Yeah. But you know where you're going. That's true. You know what you're doing. How do I build a brand? Um, because also building a brand is not cheap. That's true. It costs, it costs a lot, a lot of, money. of money. It yeah. costs a lot of money. Um, and like you said, you're in your building phase. Yeah. And even in your building phase, you are still big on the brand. Yeah. Others will say, okay, guys, we're in the building phase. Let's save money mm-hmm. and avoid, okay, the brand, let's see, it, it, it will build itself. They'll know yeah. about us eventually. That's true. You know? What what goes into building a brand um, for a business like yours? Because you are not like this very big, you know, like trade kings kind of business. Yeah, that's you're true. on your way, okay. Yeah. But even as you're on your way, and also I want you to speak to other businesses. How do they begin to build a brand? Um, what goes into brand construction? Great. Um, I think for us, we we realized um, at a very early stage that business is an infinite game. Um, Business, so we are not competing. We are playing the long game. So there's a difference between your finite games and your infinite games. So your finite game would be soccer, right? So with soccer, you know how to tell who a winner is. Football. Yeah, from the scores. So finite games, the rules are clear, right? Um, you know how to tell who the winner is. You know when the game ends. At 90 minutes, the game is done. Whereas infinite games, the rules are not clear. They're not known. It's an infinite game. It will never stop. And so businesses will come, businesses will go. But the word business itself, the game keeps playing, right? And that is what it takes for most most big businesses that you see play this game. So it's 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 about not beating your competitors, it's about how can we remain playing? And that is what it takes. And that is the motive or the drive behind us investing in the brand. It's because we know we're playing the long game. And that is why in business, how do you tell who a winner is? You can't tell this person has won, this person has lost. And a lot of people get it wrong. Everyone is targeting the competitor, right? But you're playing an infinite game. This game doesn't end. So... Yeah, you're targeting the wrong opponent. It's not about the competitor. It's not about the competition. It's how can you remain playing? Like, how can you remain playing? And it's about building a brand. You can only remain playing when you invest in your brand because then people buy into the brand. And when people buy into the brand, they support you to the hilt. And for us, that's, that's how we're doing it. We're not competing. We are playing the long game. Like, can we just play for as long as we can play? Can we? Can people relate with us as a business? Because people need to relate with you. One of my favorite businesses would be Starbucks. You know what I mean? I don't think Starbucks is the best coffee there is. It's just what they've done with their brand that we've bought into it and we, we've come to love this brand. And that's, that is what it takes to play the game. It's about getting people to buy into the brand. And it's... To getting people to believe in the brand. And for us, it's about that. We're just playing for as long as we can play. So, I mean, you're ne- when you're playing the long game, you never lose, you never win. You're only ahead or behind. So for us, really, that has been the motivation. That is why we, we go crazy about our brand. We're deliberate because we want to play for as long as we can play. We're not competing. We want to, we've got a goal is how can we make technology accessible to people in Zambia? Like you said, communication, you and I, before we we sat here, we're talking about how communication is a human right. And there's so many kids out there um, in Shangombo and these remote areas who can't get an education because they just don't have access to to technology. And for us, we're trying to say, how can we grow device penetration from 38% to 65%. What would it mean for people who are not connected? You and I talk on the phone. You and I have shared opportunities on the phone. What is it like for people that don't have access to, to technology? So we are playing the long game. And when you're playing the long game, it's, it's not about you. It's really about the greater good. 
and that then becomes your guiding light. So for me, like you said, what would I tell businesses? It's they should find um, a mission that is bigger than just the business. And that's people-centered because then that guides you and it becomes your, your source of inspiration and the motive behind what you do. So for us, I think we'll keep investing in our brand. We are playing the game. And when you're playing the game, it's fun. It's exciting. So like you said, people don't understand why are we bringing Caspers because we've got intentions to, to then get into these markets long term, the South African markets. So who then do we partner with? It's people in those territories. And that's why we are playing the long game. That long game answer is a very good answer. I'm oh, yeah? Impressed. Yeah. It's um, crazy. It does wonders for the business. Yeah. Yeah, These big businesses do it. They do it. And and I love for more Zambians to look at business that way. Yeah. Because also I know that some of these businesses you think are competing, are having coffee in the background, thinking about how do we, you know, grow yeah. the market yeah. and whatnot. And you know, you are there. And when you're not competing, hey, you set the trends. Yeah. Yeah. You never see Apple advertising, do you? No, you I've never, never seen an influencer for Apple. <laughs> you, have you ever seen a billboard for Apple? What would I even see? you never seen, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's because of, of those things. You don't need to when you've, you've built a couch around your brand. You, you don't need to. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, wh- what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned about life from the side of an entrepreneur that you'd never have learned were you not on that side? It takes time. It takes time. I think you can be ready. Um, You can have the money. You can have everything at your disposal, but it takes time. It really takes time. Um, I remember for the longest time, we were ready to get a store at East Park, right? Everything was ready. We had the money um, to, to launch, but we just couldn't get the opportunity. We just couldn't. So I've learned over time that everything worthwhile takes time. Um, Yeah, it just takes time. I think that is one of the lessons that I've learned. Um, There are times when I look at where I would have loved our business to be. And because of that lesson, I think perspective comes in and I'm not bothered. Like it just takes time. Coupled, I think married to playing an infinite game. And so is life. You know what I mean? Eh? It's, I, I've learned that the journey is the destination, really. Um, the journey is the, is the destination. So we have this picture of a destination, but perhaps I think we are already in, in our destination as a business. Some people feel that the right time they should brand their business better is when they have this big conglomerate. You know what I mean? But for us, we feel this is the right time to do it. We'll bring Casper um, um, because we feel this is the right time. Not that we have all the money, but really it takes time to build. And as we build, let's have fun because really it's a long way. It's a long way. So really it takes time. So is life. From, from your time in business, yeah. what have you come to understand customers want? What do customers want? Because I feel like if you get that question wrong, yeah, everything just crumbles. Because it's like... Um, if you go to the hospital, right, right. and then you're misdiagnosed, basically means I'm giving you medication for the wrong thing, right? That's true. Your problem yeah. is headache. I'm giving you maybe Puritan or something. You need a painkiller, you know. And But because I do not understand what your problem is, yeah, what I am giving you is not solving the problem. So if I think, oh, customers want cheap things, and I give them cheap things, maybe they don't want cheap things. That's true. Your point. So from, from, from your experience, what have you come to understand is, is, is the one thing the customers want and that cuts across industry for example yeah it's across true. different sectors what do you think really customers want and how do entrepreneurs make sure that they give them and the customer always wants to keep coming back to you that's true um i, I think to answer that question i would say customers are also influenced by times right um and that is why you have your your gen z's you have your, um, your, your millennials and different things then tend to matter for, um, for different customers. And for me, I think the 21st century customer 
is not so much concerned about price. Price is a huge factor in attracting customers. But I think the 21st century customer is looking for service. I think now more than ever, the topic, um, I mean, discussions around service are quite big because that is what customers are looking for. I, I tell people that customers are not buying products, but the 21st century customer is buying the experience. Really, they're buying the experience and the aesthetics. And restaurants have got this right. You realize that now even even food is not about food anymore. It's about the aesthetics and how the food is, is so placed. Yeah. So really, um, we are in a lifestyle generation and customers are looking for places, number one, that would give them lifestyle, right? Customers are looking for, and that is where your aesthetics come in. I want to be in a place where it's, it's nice. Um, it's just that others can't afford, but really everyone is looking for a great experience and people are looking um, to be in spaces where they could actually have a good time. So if you can be a business that offers customer service, the experience side of, of things, and if you can be aesthetically pleasing, uh, you, you'll get the 21st um, century customer. All right. Would you say entrepreneurship is a popular path? Is a popular path? Mm, right now. Would you say it's it's a popular path? I think in Zambia it's it's an, it's become an, it's popular because it's an alternative. Because people like you've got no choice. Well, um, Sui, there's um, what you call poor entrepreneurs and push entrepreneurs. So uh, poor entrepreneurs are those people who are pulled into entrepreneurship because of the opportunities. Could be the resources, the money. Like in the US, most people are poor entrepreneurs because the, the opportunities are just enormous. Then there's push entrepreneurs, people that are pushed into entrepreneurship because of... It's like uh, mm, You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're pushed in there because you can't get a job, because you need extra income. And yeah, I think that is the case with most of us um, this side of the world. Really, we're, we're pushed into entrepreneurship and maybe for lack of a better term, not so much passion. And this is what I say. Sometimes passion can can be groomed. It's not true that you, you need to be passionate about something. Sometimes your passion can grow a while at it. So um, I think it's it's just the best option. That's okay. what I can say. It's the best option. You, you are well-traveled and you've been to some amazing places on 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 god's uh, beautiful planet yeah what is it that you have seen that you feel like if we could do this as entrepreneurs in zambia i think we'll be on a different trajectory what do you see out there that you come here and say ah, zambia che. What, what, what 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 is it like um obviously you, you just don't travel but you also have conversations with entrepreneurs from yeah. the continent from other continents as well from europe from um North America. What is it that you see there that makes you understand, oh, so this is why these guys are developed? Um, attention to detail would be number one. Um, I think people um, out there really pay attention to detail. Just how from product development, how they design could be their buildings and how they market. Uh, you could tell that there's really some attention to detail here. Number two, it would be forward thinking. Um, I think there's very few companies here in Zambia that plan long term, you know, um, like what does 10 years look like for you as, as a business? There's very few really businesses that if you sat down and asked for a document, a strategic plan on where they want to be as a business, especially um, small businesses, um, that's not the case. Data-driven businesses also in Zambia, uh, we don't see that. Like every decision with our friends is backed by data. They are not just, they are not just selling. They are also collecting data. And data is then using, is, is helping these businesses, you know, put in systems. Data is helping them 
come up with marketing strategies. And this is one of the things I'm always telling folks at work. Guys, can we have records of how many people inquire about our products against how many people buy? Who are the majority? How can we tilt our marketing campaign campaigns, our, our, our marketing tone and all these things, our brand tone towards people that actually buy our products? So I, I don't see a lot of um, forward-thinking companies back home. And I, I don't blame us. We do have a long way to go. And the story is slowly and slowly changing. Data-driven businesses, you should look up um, the story of Target. There's a very famous um, story about Target and how they predicted that one of their customers' daughter will be... Um, is is pregnant and, and 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 it was a big case because they're able to tell what people are, are inquiring um, in their stores here we, we we don't do that so i think it's attention to detail it's it's the desire to build forward thinking companies but also um it would be data collection i think people really we don't take time to to collect data but also creativity creativity you you would think some of these businesses are, ma are marketing agencies. Like the creativity is just out of this world. You don't see that here, really. You, you don't see that here. I think we are still in our archaic phase of, of marketing. But, but I think every business is about, every business is telling a story. And I think that's about, that's creativity. I visited Nike. And you wouldn't be lost. You know that, oh, actually, I'm in a place where it's all about sport from the entire campus and how it's designed. So the creativity, I think, here, here you need to be first introduced what a, to, to a business and what they do for you to know that, oh, actually, they, they are selling devices. Even their logos and all these things, you know, I think, the creativity is just out of this world. And if we can embrace that, these four things, it will be a very good start for, for us. But, but also I'm very confident, hey, we are not that bad. And I feel that we just started this, uh, this conversation around entrepreneurship as, as a people. So I feel the people that are coming behind us will really do a great job. Yeah, you, you really brought those answers, eh? Uh, how, how, how do you determine how much you pay yourself? Was it fifty percent of your revenue? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I pay myself very little, very little. And my pay slip. When you look at my pay slip, in fact, I, I get paid the same amount with um, our manager operations. Well, okay, not very little, but also not so much. Do you just go and do this? Ah, with the pressure, just send me five, five pin. Now bring back money. No, 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 no. I'm very accountable. I mean, um, we've got an accountant, of course, that that runs these things, and uh, really, I, I, it's it's not done that way. Really, you 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 can't grow a business that way. If you had to say five things to young entrepreneurs, um, to advise them on running a business, what five things would you give as advice? I think they should be forward thinking. Really, That's um, one. it's forward thinking. Um, it will guide you. You look at things from what will the market look like five years from now? And five years from now, what type of business are we trying to build? And it's that forward thinking that feeds into the infinite game that I talked about. Because then you, based on if you establish what type of business you're trying to build, your energy will be centered around that. It becomes your guiding light. So they should be forward thinking. Um, number two, they should be they should they should be in it to win it. I think a lot of people, and that is why you're talking about people make money and and and, and it becomes lavish. Um, which is not a bad thing. I think a good time is is, is always important. But you should be in it to win it. Like you being in business should should account for something. There should be a resume. You know, 10, 20 years from now, 
we should look back and say you were here. And today, if for whatever reason we shut down, people still remember that there was EMARC. There should be impact as a business. So they should look for impact, something bigger than them. The number three, they should be enthous enthusiastic about what they're doing. You should love what you're doing. You should be passionate about what you do. Um, one athlete says, I think she does long jumps, you know, and asked her how she does things. And she says, I don't know. I just throw my heart into it. So you need to pour your heart into it. That is one of my favorite. My favorite um, CEOs says that. Just pour your heart into it. So you need to love it. It should be a lifestyle. So you have to be in it to win it. Number four. Keep records. Keep records. Keep records. I missed out on an opportunity of serious, serious funding. Serious funding. Because our books were not in order. And it's from that time that immediately after that, we employed an accountant. We are talking millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. So I think businesses should record what they're doing. So coupled to that would be the first person you should employ as a business person would be an accountant. I know a lawyer is very important, very important. But if you can get an accountant to do your books, I think that would be great. Record whatever it is that you're doing. Look, these people, uh, investors, um, these are smart people. For them to be millionaires and, and they're smart people. So they're not people that you preach to with words and they'll buy into your emotions. Like you're saying, how do you draw human, um, the human side of things? Investors don't look at that. They're not interested in your story. They're interested in the return, really. So your books always, always, whether you're making profits or losses, always because even not just from, from a funding point of view, but also that becomes your benchmark, whether you're growing as a business or not. Then number five, what's the one thing that I could share with um, young and upcoming entrepreneurs? So I'm trying to look for a very valuable lesson that I've learned or something that I've failed at. Um, I've already talked about enthusiasm. Number five, I'm, I'm thinking something that I feel would uh, would really be impactful. People first. Yeah, people first. People should always come first. People should always come first. Which people? Customers, employees? Uh, those are all people. It's customers. Look, we're not talking about people. And, and there, there are people that play this game very well. Customers are happy, but employees are not happy. But for me, it would be people. Because it would take a motivated uh, people, employees, to actually deliver to customers. You know what I mean? So there's no, there's no line, really, between employees and customers for me i feel this is just one group of people really so people should always come first people should always come first you need to be able to look at your employees and say what does it mean for them to be here what does what does it mean for them to be here what is it that they can get out of being here you know people can't just escort you to, to on your way to the top. Can you be a company that allows for people's dreams to be realized? Can you be a company that delivers value to its customers? And for us, we really, really pride in that because our ethos is around Ubuntu. And we look at it from, from, from three angles. It would be our customers, our employees, and the community we serve. And everything is centered around that. 
how do we then create an environment that nurtures happy people? How do we create or how do we build a business that makes, that delivers value to its customers? But also, how can we be a business that inspires that kid in Kalingalinga? Really for us, that is what it takes. And even our mission is about how do we make technology accessible to the 62% Zambians who are not digitally connected. So find something that is people-centered. How can you get people to the top with you? And yeah. Thank you, Manu. Thank you so much, Sui. Very insightful conversation. Um, quite a number of takeaways for me. Right. Um, I like the, the finite game and the infinite game. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, that was uh, food for thought. Was it? Um, Thank you so much. Yeah. And I do know that, especially for those that are running businesses, there are a lot of gems that have, you know, crawled out of this conversation. I hope so. I, yeah. I hope so. Thank I mean, I, I loved it being here. In fact, I was waiting. When will I ever get invited to this prestigious see, podcast of his? You see the thing you said about time? Uh-huh. It takes time, yeah. The thing I've come to learn is there's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And you know that thing where... Even even for me, there are things that I wanted to come right. to me some time back, mm-hmm. but they never came. And you know, when it comes, it just makes sense. Exactly. It I've just asked makes people like sense. That no, there are some people who told me like, no, I can't come on the podcast because I'm not, I'm not ready. Yeah. I'm not ready yet. Yeah. Some things have to happen, then I will come. That's true. Um, for me, really, it's good to see young entrepreneurs like you pushing that also um, and being selfless with the knowledge. Because I think there are others who feel like I can't tell them. They'll find out on their own. (laughs) (laughs) And I, 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 you know, I've come to learn that the world has become a very, very small place because of technology. Yeah. You know, today you don't, when we started, you needed to travel to China to find a supplier. when, When we started, you needed to travel to, to just get a supplier. But today, um, people can just go on, 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 on Google and search for a supplier who sells handbags in Turkey, in Guangzhou, and information will come up. And, and what I've come to learn is if people are determined to succeed, whether you hold them, whether you provide them with the information or not, they'll always find a way. The info is just a bonus. Yes, so y- you might as well just... Um, yeah, give to people and, and, and I feel there's there's just enough in the world for everyone. The cake is so big. So when is the a- iPhone fifteen going to be available at Emac? <laughs> very soon. Very soon. We're excited for, for that. The iPhone fifteen. I hope you The come. real iPhone fifteen. The real iPhone fifteen. Oh, It'll be out soon and people should look out for it. I'll come and trade in mine. Of course you and you see people can actually buy their iPhones. In three ways at Emoc, you can pay for you can pay for it on cash. You can trade it in, so you can bring your old device. Your you iPhone get your six. I- yeah, <laughs> iPhone six. <laughs> yeah, so you can bring your old device and swap it with the new iPhone fifteen. But also, you can gadget finance it. And that's why Emoc is about up to six months. Oh, so it pays slow for six months. Yeah. So but you get the device. You get the device instantly. Now, how cool is that? How Who's do doing that on the that? market? Who's how, how doing do that on the market? Away? It's Zambians. No, we love Zambians and they're good people. They're good people. You just have to care about them and they'll care about your business. Yeah. All right, Manu, thank you very much. We'll keep watching your story. Um, thank you so much for um, sharing our story, amplifying what we're doing. We don't take it lightly. Um, really, it's exciting when yeah. you shine a light on us. No, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. And, I had uh, a great all time. All the best with what you guys are doing. All right, and all the best with the podcast. Mm, Cheers. Yeah. Bye.